I'm on the crap mic today, so I'm having to limit the amount I say. Between gusts of wind, the microphone's wobbling as well. It's really cold here, and I can't even afford you any shed time this week because I'm not actually here, I'm here. Washington DC. I thought I'd uh, come and see if Donald needed any help kind of packing his stuff up. Anyway, can't get to the shed this week because I'm on a, on a bit of a tour of the States. But if you recall in last week's video, Sandy was doing a deep dive into two bits of kit that we both bought. The ALM Busy Circuits Jessica's new workout thing and the Mutable Instruments Platt. Now in this second part of his video, he combines these with the Expert Sleepers Disting Mark IV and a delay by Ericsson's and actually the results are really kind of very, very interesting. So that's just with one control. Let's see what we can do and I'll show you how powerful this can be. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take output two here. I'm going to jump in and give that sample and hold random output. Let's make it quite a quick one, maybe four times the clock speed. And I'm going to throw that into, let's put this on a different sound. I'm going to put that into the harmonic input. And now we're introducing a bit of sample and hold, a bit of random control into our harmonics here. I'm going to do the same for output three. Let's put that on random. Where are we? Hang on. Wave. Random. Now we could, if we wanted to, put this straight into the volts per octave. But let's be honest, that's quite tuneless. So I'm going to take that out and I'm going to put that into the Expert Sleepers Disting, which is on the Quantize function. And we'll come back to that in future and explain what this is doing. But for now, what that's doing is taking that random voltage and transposing it so that it falls within a certain key range. It's still quite a crazy wide range that it's got going on there. So what I can do is I'll go to level, and I'm going to reduce that level down to say 30%, so that that random pitch is staying within a slightly smaller range, it's not jumping across, you know, five octaves. And I like how that's sounding so far, but I'm going to make it just a little bit quicker. So I'm liking how this is sounding so far. Let's make it sound just a little bit more interesting. I'm just going to throw it into a delay, the uh, DIY delay from Erica Synths that I built in a previous video. Just to add a little bit of timbral variation to it. And then what we could do is we could take our Pamela's New Workout Output 4 And if we leave that on a gate that's pulsing like this, we can actually use that to control the tempo sync of the Erica synths. So that those delays will be in time with the triggers that are coming out of Pamela's new workout into Platts. So then let's take output five, and I'm going to choose again that random gate, that um, sample and hold. And I'm going to make that maybe divided by two, so it's half of the clock speed. But leave it at 100%. And I'm going to use that to control the time in that delay. So now we have some clocked control changing the, uh, feet, the delay time on our Erica synth delay. And it's also sy synced to the same clock. So this is getting quite interesting. 
We still have three more outputs we can play with here from Pamela's new workout. So I'm going to, again, I'm just going to use these fairly randomly for now. Um, let's take the random control again. Um, but this time, let's maybe make that also behave in a Euclidean pattern. A different one from the triggers as well, just to keep things really crazy. Um, but let's say we maybe want it to be not entirely random, so we're going to set our loop value to 32. So every 32 beats, we'll play the same pattern. And let's use that to control. Let's, let's see, we have our morph control here, which seems to do quite an awful lot. So let's go into there, set our morph all the way left, and set our attenuverter all the way right, more or less. So now that random output from Pamela's new workout is randomizing within the full range of the morph control, which is fun. But let's maybe make it do it a little bit quicker. And let's just take our last two outputs and do the same for our timbre control. Output 7. And again, I'm going to set that. I'm using the sample and hold an awful lot here. Um, just because it's got quite a quite a dramatic effect. But let's control the timbre here. And then we can long press to get back out and we're going to change the modifier here. Let's make this change three times the clock speed just to keep it again offset from everything else. I'm going to turn up the feedback on my delay a little bit, just to make it more interesting when those changes in delay time happen. And let's jump onto a different, uh, a different algorithm here on plats, just so we can hear more of the effect that this is having. If I jump two down to our wavetable algorithm here, this is probably going to have quite a dramatic effect on the timbre. So I'm just going to click this button here twice. So this is quite fun, but I'm thinking that the uh, triggers going into our plats could be a little bit different, so let's try making those twice as fast. Now things are getting a little bit too busy maybe, so what I'm going to do is jump into the R skip here and say that maybe 33% of the time it just wants to skip a step. So you can see between these two modules, there's actually an awful lot you can do. And again, we're really just jumping around, randomizing some of the values and um, the pitch and triggers on plats here. Um, we're barely scratched the surface here of what you can do. One of the neat things in plats, if you hold down the left button here and change the timbre and the morph controls, you can adjust those built-in VCAs and VCFs, and those are displayed on the um, on the LEDs, so we can make those envelopes just a little bit more open, and it will give us a little bit more of an impression of what's going on in sound-wise. That's a nice sort of sweet spot. I'm going to turn the feedback up a little bit on our delay, and maybe make the delay itself generally a little faster. Of course, for any of these random values that I'm sending out, they're all just, most of these are just going out at 100%, but I could set those to, you know, a much smaller value, so they're only randomizing a little bit less. This is all a little bit wacky and crazy sounding. And again, pressing the right button here will switch over to our more percussive and noisy samples, so this is sounding more like a, a kind of arpeggiated melodic sequence, but if I jump over onto any of the red algorithms, it's going to be more like a beat. Kick drum, snare drums, hi hat, granular cloud, 
and some of these can be reasonably melodic too. Especially this harm inharmonic string here. Gets into some quite natural sounding timbres. So that's it for Pamela's new workout in Platts for today. It's been a bit of a kind of whistle-stop tour of the features. I'm going to experiment a little bit more with these, combining them with the Expert Sleepers Disting, the Erica Synth Delay, and I can see these being really powerful tools. Again, the Pamela's new workout can be everything from a real random voltage generator to just like a really solid clock source um, and clock divider, clock rotating, all sorts of things like that. And Platts, again, I'm using here as a sort of triggered little low pass gates percussive sound but you could also take the trig output out of that and just use it as a sort of raw oscillator. Um, one of the things I didn't mention on plats here is we also have an auxiliary output so for most of these algorithms um, you'll get a different output from the auxiliary that's kind of related in some way so if I just run this quickly again and go to the chord output here it's going to sound pretty nasty on what the settings that we're using but I'm going to pull out of the output here and go into the auxiliary and instead of hearing that chordal material the auxiliary output here will give us just the root note of the chord which can be really useful. And that's just one example. I mean the auxiliary is generally going to be something that relates to the, the main output and it might be really handy for, for making a more adventurous or interesting patch. Anyway, I hope that's useful and gives you some food for thought, so back to you for now. Indeed, Sandy, uh, that provided me with much food for thought, and thanks for showing me how to use these things. I'll be diving into them next week, and I believe also, Sandy, you've been preparing a jam for next week, which uh, I really can't wait to see. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. If you want to be notified the next time we put a video up, ding that bell, and one of those would be fantastic if you've liked what we've done here today. Right. This is actually colder than Scotland. I'm getting in. See you next time.